That's good. Go right. ahead. Questions for coach. Hey Scott, just uh, wanted to ask you. Saw probably what the Indiana athletic director said about Nebraska staff not giving Indiana's program respect. I guess will your staff do anything that would have prompted him to say that? We've been scratching our heads, um, wondering what that's all about. I we don't have any idea to be honest with you. I'd, I'd be curious to know. Um, you know, I, I couldn't have been nicer and more complimentary to coach before and after the game. Um, we had a ton of respect for their team and uh, where they've gotten their team to. I told them that before the game, told them how good a job we thought they must be doing because of the way their team had been playing. I told them for what it's worth. I thought their offensive coordinator was doing an unbelievable job, and I told them after the game I was really happy for him. Um, so I have no idea where it came from. Um, if there's something that, that we did, I'd certainly like to know, but uh, that that's a dead issue to me. Uh, we're going to treat every opponent we play with respect and um, they're certainly having a good year so they they deserve the success. What response did you see uh, from your team today and uh, I guess how do you feel about kind of the, the, the togetherness going forward after Saturday? Um, I thought the togetherness got better today. Um, sometimes you got to go through some things to get it there. Uh, listen, we uh, we still have things to fix. We're still improving, obviously, still need to improve. But uh, the guys that want to compete and want to be good uh, handle everything the right way and, and learn from everything. And that, that's what our team did today. Scott, you've outscored every opponent in the first, second, and fourth quarter. But the third quarter is the one that they've doubled the score on you. Any particular reason you think that third quarter has been some troublesome for your team? You know, we're scratching our heads on that a little too. Um, we've, I've tried a bunch of different tacks. In fact, in, this week I ripped their butts at halftime uh, to try to get a response. Um, I thought defense came out and played well on the first drive. Then we got pinned back and missed block a couple things and uh, had a short punt to them and they went and scored. And uh, even though we started, started out good in the third quarter, it, it didn't go very well immediately after that. Um, so, hey, we got we to gotta play with the same kind of intensity in the third quarter we played with in the first quarter and figure out where it goes from there. But that, that's something we definitely have to address. I wasn't aware of that stat specifically with the first, second, fourth quarter, but that, that's something we need to continue to look at. A couple of you guys mentioned a, a team meeting this morning maybe that was a little bit different than some others. Did you feel like there was something that needed to be said or did they? I did. Um, you know, the. We always want to be coaches that love on our players, try to help them improve. Um, really felt during that game that we made some of the same mistakes to get us beat that we made last year when we were just trying to get the culture improved. Uh, the, the the dumb alignments, the dumb penalties, the um, turnovers, false starting on first down, uh, making bad plays right when it counted. Um, we, we made plenty of plays to win that game, and some of the same mistakes got it got us beat in a few close games last year, got us beat again Saturday. Um, there, there comes a time and a place where you have to rip some tails, honestly. And that's what that's what we did. But I wanted our players in, to understand the reason we did that, why we did that. Um, wanted them to know it, it's never personal. And, and the guys get it. Uh, talking to the captains, they, they want some of that to make sure that guys are conscientious to do their jobs better and more precisely, and I, I don't. I, I still feel like that's what we're missing a little bit. Is just the the guys caring enough to do their job perfect on Saturdays and practice all the time, because um, it's close. But we we can't do those little things and, and shoot ourselves in the foot. We're not a good enough team right now. Hey, it's, it's college football world of transfers and quarterbacks. How rare is it to have depth like you have at quarterback, and how can you use that to your advantage yeah. down the stretch? Well, I think quarterback's one example of a, a position where there's no question we've improved, gotten more talent in here, increased our depth. Um, all three of those kids are, are good players, and, and we're in a good spot to have all three of them. Um, I don't know if I've ever had three on a team that have the talent of the three we have right now. Uh, so um, that spells good things for the future. and. Uh, you know, right now they're all three nicked up, so we're going to have to do the best we can in the short term. 
How do you how do you create a, a, a an offense that doesn't get three quarterbacks who are all really talented in at the same time? Uh, it, I think it's just bad breaks to some degree. Uh, to some other degree, you know, we're gonna we we had to put our team in the best position to try to win Saturday, and that meant some quarterback runs. Uh, I think we just kind of got unlucky that both of them got nicked up. Noah was a little hurt going in, and um, and that can happen. Um, but I, it's a little bit unlucky. You know, eventually we'll be good enough. We won't have to rely as much on that. But uh, those plays were there Saturday. Obviously, they looked good when we executed them, and. Um, they'll all three be fine. Is the plan for Luke still to redshirt, or are you opening that decision up right now? No, I, our plan is still to redshirt Luke. So uh, he's running out of games. But if if we need him, we're going to use him. Yeah, with, with Adrian, you talked on Saturday about how there was at least a conversation about whether he could play at the end. I mean, that would seem that he's pretty close. Do you have a, a plan? I mean, are you keeping his long-term health in mind, or what goes in? Playing on with the Listen, our players' best interest is always one of my top two priorities. Mission accomplishment and our players uh, taking care of our guys are my two primary responsibilities. Um, yeah, in that game, you know, obviously Noah had to leave the game hurt, and Adrian uh, was emergency only and hurt. And, um, you know, we kind of huddled up and I talked to them about, and to Mark, about which guy was most capable going in. And Noah gutted it out and went in there and did a good job. Um, I think both of them could have gone into the game if we needed them at that point. Some of your first year players were actually the most vocal and kind of echoing your sentiments after the game about OK not being good enough. Did, did you like seeing that, hearing that, when it's you know true freshmen not being afraid to kind of step to the, the microphone like that? Yeah, you know, I was around here for a long time where Greatness was expected, demanded, the standard. Um, that That's what we need to get back to. And part of that's expecting that out of everybody on your team, expecting to win, going out and making it happen, uh, those kind of things. Um, I think there's a lot of people, old and young, on our team that get that. Um, and the more we can continue to build on those kids and, and the culture we have, the better we'll be. I think there's a lot of young kids that, uh, want it to be that way and expect it to get that way and get that way soon. So, um, you know, we need everybody on board and, and pull in the same direction. You're someone that doesn't really yell a lot. You kind of talked about not cursing and things like that. But how do you balance being that way as a coach and also deciding when you need to rip your team? And also, do you feel like athletes in 2019 respond well to getting ripped still or do you feel like yeah but that's really what the team meeting was about without going into it too, too much is I you know I kind of made a conscious decision that it was time to it was time to do that um, again we got beat a couple times last year because we got some dumb personal foul penalties and the same thing happens Saturday uh, we get beat um, a couple times last year put ourselves in bad situations because we jump off sides at the wrong time we do it Right when we need a good punt or kick, uh, we don't get it. Um, you know, it, I want the guys to understand how important it is to get their job done and execute. And I, you know, I, I've learned a long time ago. I played for Bill Parcells and Bill Belichick, and uh, one of your first rules is learn how to take a, a butt chewing. Um, and you know, as their coach, like I said, mission accomplishment is the number one uh, job, along with taking care of my players personally and on the field. And there's, there's a time when they need their, their butt chewed. Um, but that's what the meeting was about. That's not our character. That's not our staff's character. And I don't want a team where I have to do that. Uh, but if that's what it takes to get some of these things stopped, um, then we're going to have to yell a little bit in the short term. Um, most of the kids on our team, vast majority of our kids care and want to be great. Uh, but if there comes a time where things aren't changing, then they, they need to get an airful. You could mention Indiana's offensive coordinator. Uh, he's he's new there, but but what has the coaching challenge been in the Big Ten in terms of I don't know the the quality of staff and the quality of, of preparation that you see from other teams compared to the AAC or even the Pac-12, and how is that? How, how have your coaches adjusted? Uh, I don't think there's a difference. I think there's really good coaching in the Big Ten uh, across the board. Um, you know, I mentioned Indiana's guys. They've done a great job with that team. Uh, I think their offensive coordinator does some smart things. Um, defensively, 
everybody in this league sound and knows what they're doing. Uh, that's no different. The Pac-12 was the same way. There's really good coaches in the American. That's why uh, coaches win there and are are leaving for, for some of these other jobs. Um, there's good coaches in every league. Um, so the Big Ten certainly no exception. I think there's great coaches in this league. How do you feel like your coaches have adjusted this season as the, as the seasons wore on? Uh, you know, we're all in this fight together. Um, we're not a good enough team yet. Nobody's happy with it. Our, the coaches are working their tails off. Um, I think there's still some details that need to get ironed out, whether that's a, a coaching issue of players not doing what we're telling them. Uh, but again, if the players aren't doing what we're telling them, that it's the coach's responsibility at the end of the day to get it done. And, um, you know, I, I believe in my guys. I know anytime you lose a game or two, like, like we have, people start questioning everything. I don't question my coaches. Um, they know what they're doing. If there's issues, we're going to address them. I'm going to talk to them about it. We're going to get it fixed. These are the right guys to do it. Um, we need to be better. I need to be better. And the team needs to be better. And we're all in this together. One of the things you inherited when you got here was this constant coaching change for these players, especially on defense over, over four or five years before you got here. How important is continuity at this point for these players just to have the same guys and have the familiar schemes and familiar messages month after month, year after year? Yeah, before? continuity was a key here for a long time. And it, it hadn't been there until we got here. Um, continuity is certainly going to help. Uh, Listen, it, what, it, what it boiled down to again Saturday and it boiled down to a bunch last year was, to me, guys caring enough and being conscientious and focused enough to not kind of do their job but to get their job done. Uh, we gave up three or four. We were terrible on third down on defense, absolutely terrible. If we'd have been even decent on third down, we'd have gotten stops and won the game. Uh, I don't have any doubt of that. They did a great job. I give them credit. In those third and fourth downs, we were bad on. There was one guy kind of doing his job, but getting beat to his leverage, or one guy taking his eyes off his man and man coverage and not being disciplined with his eyes. Um, and again, the, the coaches need to coach that better. But at the end of the day, when the players get on the field, they need to not just kind of do it, not just be OK at it. They need to get it done. And that falls on me. It falls on the coaches. Um, same on offense. We missed a couple blocks, a couple assignments that would have kept a couple drives going. Um, those are things that need to be fixed. Now, th there's a lot of really good things happened on offense. I think the bye week really helped us get better at some things on offense that, that made us more successful. Um, I thought guys played more aggressive. We worked on tackling a lot on defense over the bye week. I thought we tackled pretty well. Um, stopped the run well enough to win the game. We just have to be conscientious enough as coaches and players to make sure that whoever's on the field and has an assignment doesn't kind of do it, they, they get it done. And that's a little bit of what's uh, keeping us from getting over the hump right now. When you're going to face a team that has a caliber player like Rondell Moore who hasn't played in a while, and you're not sure if he's going to go, if you watch a little bit back of, of how they like to use him, you prepare as if he's going to play? Well. We think Rondell is one of the best players in the country, and I don't think we're alone in thinking that. Uh, he's a special guy. But I'll tell you, they got some other special guys on that team, too. Uh, they've recruited well. I think he's really smart with his scheme offensively. He's going to give you some stuff you haven't seen. Um, you know, we got to prepare for their team. Uh, if they have one of the best players in the country available, um, it's not really looking at the plays they run with him because they run about everything with him. Uh, we have to prepare for Purdue and, and see if he's healthy or not. I, I hope for his sake he gets healthy soon. What do you think of that Bell kid, though? The Bell the freshman, he's pretty good. Yeah, again, it isn't just Rondale. Bell's good. Uh, I think they got good backs. Um, they've played a couple quarterbacks. Both of them are, are really good players. So, um, you know, this is a team that came in here and beat us at home last year. Uh, we we got to go there and, and play the best we can. Have you guys looked at subbing in their defensive back for a linebacker in situations kind of like Saturday, Saturday when they were trying to find those matchups? Yeah, they, you know, in, in some of those cases, we were double teaming a guy and gave up our leverage on double team. Or there was one, there was a miscommunication. We were supposed to have their best receiver doubled, and it looked like we had the wrong guy on a, a, their best receiver. Um, you know, Chin's 
on defense, us on offense, we're putting the guys out there that we think give us the best chance. Uh, you know, like JoJo's, when when he's good with his eyes and discipline, he's one of our best cover guys. So I'm not sure it makes sense to sub in for him. Uh, there's some other situations where maybe we do need to make some of those uh, adjustments and personnel changes. Um, a couple injuries here and there keep us from doing that a little more. Uh, losing Deontay at the beginning of the year uh, has hurt us a little bit because we've had to move Cam Taylor around. He's been beat up. Um, and kind of a little bit of personnel and a little bit of who you trust to be out there in those situations. But w we take a look at all that. Scott, do you have, do you have uh, Ferguson available to you on, uh, on defense right now? Ferguson will, will be available this week. He wasn't available last week. Coach? <laughs> been around Eric Chenander a long time. What, what in particular do you like about his ability to navigate through when there are tough times, when you have bad weeks uh, as a as leader for that defense? Uh, Chins is one of the smartest coaches I've been around. Um, you know, looking at what we're doing right now, to me, we're not good enough at the little details on either side of the ball right now. And the, the little details have to have to get better. Um, that, that led to some of the third down stuff. E every kid in our program adores Coach Shenander. They all play hard for him. I don't think there's any doubt our, our players are playing harder right now than they did um, a year ago or however far you want to look back. Uh, I, th I see more hats to ball. I see us tackling well. I see the effort. Um, guys are playing for him. What's missing, like I said, is the attention to detail to do to do their job and get it done and you know nobody had to tell Jason Peter that nobody had to tell Grant Wistrom that or Joel Makovic that if they had a job they were going to get it done and um, again it falls on us as coaches to make sure that happens and, and some of the responsibilities on the players when they have an opportunity to make a play they got to get it done and um, Chins is the right guy to make sure that happens. Was, did that miss block affect Mills' playing time after he missed that block, or was it the relationship Wondell has with Luke and that zone read that changed Mills' playing time? No, I, I trust Diedrich Mills to go out and make plays. He he plays hard. He made one mistake and missed a block. Unfortunately, it led to a fumble and probably a 14-point swing in that game. Uh, but he's one of the guys that cares. Uh, he's one of the guys that's going to give us full effort at practice and in the game. Um, I trust him going forward. To be honest with you, it was more in the second half of a. Um, the situation was more that Wandale was making plays. Uh, we needed to create some big plays to try to get back in the game once we got behind. Um, Wandale had missed some practice, and it was easier for him to go in at running back than it was at receiver with some of the new schemes we had. So it had more to do with that than, than us not trusting Mills. Uh, everybody's going to make a mistake. Um, Mills cares, and he's going to give us everything he has. With respect to some of the, the struggles in the red zone on either side of the ball, do you, do you find some of those issues are, are rooted in the same sort of things, or, or are they different, or what do you make of some of those? Um, you know, offensively, I didn't think we struggled in, in the red zone. We just turned it over a couple times and didn't get lined up in a formation once. Um, defensively, there's a couple of assignment busts down there, and hey, listen, we, we got to start turning and playing the ball on fade routes. I can't tell you how much we work on that. I, can't tell you how much uh, we're coaching them to do it. We're, you know, we're not we're not turning around, finding the ball, and making a play, and we're getting too many pass interference penalties. Um, it is what it is. We're going to continue to work on it, coach it. Uh, but a couple assignments in the red zone on defense, and and those things lead to points. And and again, a ton of credit to Indiana. They did some unique things and caught us on our heels on a couple, and and some other ones were self inflicted. Hang on. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Uh, guys, Coach Hoiberg's going to be in here. There are a couple of 